using a 4K ISO monitor for video editing. Awesome guys for tuning in. Today we're gonna to look at a 4K ISO monitor that's a 32 inch. There are two different variants of that particular model. There's a 32 as well as a 27 inch. I have the bigger version, the Flexscan EV3285. And so far, I have used a variety, a total of three different ISO monitors, and this is the biggest so far. Obviously, picking a monitor is always a little bit a matter of taste. Some people, they like these uh, curved monitors from Samsung, but I personally like to stick with the Japanese-made ISO brand. I have always had a good experience with those. And that's also uh, partially due to, for example, when I go to the local electronics store, you you most of the time you will only find Samsung or LG, but uh, ISO is more, I think more of an in the know kind of thing. If you're a, a business person, you like to use this at an office and you need a big screen, maybe an architect, maybe you're a creative professional. Obviously ISO has more expensive monitors for like really super professional color grading. This is not the color edge line, it's still from the flex scan line, but nonetheless, uh, for YouTube, for me, semi-professional, it still does a good job. And uh, the, I think that's partially due to one thing you might want to consider, or one thing you can definitely consider when picking a monitor. Basically, the colors are very important. And this ISO monitor has, uh, I think, 8-bit input. And then uh, look at the side card. I think it's a 12-bit internal lookup table. And then the more professional ones, I think they even have 10-bit input and 16-bit internal lookup table. So obviously the, that's maybe a little bit overkill for me because the, I mean, even with the flex scan line, which is not like this super high-end professional, I mean, I don't have to do video editing for a magazine that then goes to print and hits the store shelves. So also I'm not a super professional photographer. For YouTube, I think this still delivers excellent results and I really uh, think it's very pleasant to look at the monitor also for a long time, which is also partially due to this uh, tiny little built-in light sensor, which I think is a really cool invention that it detects the light in your environment and regulates the light intensity appropriately. And obviously you also have these, uh, let's say you're surfing the web, you're reading through some manual or some article to brush up on a certain skill, then you can switch it into paper mode and it, reduces the blue light content and removes additional strain from your eye, which all adds up to very nice ergonomics. And I mean, I had a small ISO monitor all the way back and then I switched to an iMac and I think the iMac had just a very basic uh, LG panel inside. So that was not so nice to watch over long periods of time, although the colors look good. So I did a little bit of research and I found that it really can make a big difference the way the panel is manufactured. So for example, the ISO panels are very nice because uh, it's my understanding they are IPS panels, but obviously there are also different ways, more economical ways to manufacturing uh, display panels. I think it's called uh, twisted pneumatic and so on. I mean, you can see this in a side card and a manufacturer may choose to not use the little bit more premium IPS panel, but they may choose a different manufacturing strategy to push the cost down and then maybe it has uh, some benefits maybe like if you want a super fast gaming monitor that delivers 120 frames then maybe the ISO is not the perfect choice for you. Yes you can do gaming on this and it still will look pretty nice with 60 frames however it's not primarily intended for gaming. You can use it but for me it's more like a video editing monitor and for that I know it works pretty well because I used the uh, smaller version of this the full HD one as well so as uh, most of my viewers already know you're right now watching the introductory part in part two I'm going to do an unboxing show you a few close-up shots so that you can see the build quality of the ISO monitor and then in part three I'm going to do some testing we jump into the computer I show you what you can uh, select when connecting this to your uh, professional workstation and I also going to show you the menu and the different settings and then in part four I'm going to give you a summary and conclusion what I think of this monitor upgrade uh, because I'm coming from the 24 inch model and I'm moving up to the 4k model so that's a pretty big step up and that's what we're going to check out today so guys without further ado let's get rolling with the unboxing and guys this uh, display is really really massive so I opened up the package here for you and there's some uh, 
a small notification sheet that tells you how to carefully uh, take this monitor out. Uh, one also very nice thing, you get a bunch of different cables with that monitor. So very nice, a total of four power cable, I think HDMI cable, display port, as well as USB type C. Personally, I'm still using the old Mac Pro 4.1, the 5.1. So I don't have the MacBook with the USB-C connector right here. Maybe I can get that later on and test this as well. But for now, we're gonna test this with the display port because obviously since it is 4K, it will need to be able to, the cable needs to be able to carry all the data. And I really can say this monitor is just ginormous compared to what I was previously using. So that's actually very useful. It gives you more workspace because with my old full HD ISO, maybe I can, uh, let's put them next to here. You can see the ISO monitor is always very, very nicely made. This is the old one, the full HD one, 16 by nine. And that was a little bit uh, difficult to use over time. I mean, it works, no problem if you edit 1080p footage, but uh, let me quickly show this next to you. So that's a huge size difference. Look how long that is. And this is like significantly shorter. So workspace matters. If you do video editing, you don't have to move through the timeline a lot. So I can show this to you in a second. And then in the test, uh, in the last part, in the summary and conclusion part, I think I'm gonna be very happy because that will improve and speed up my workflow. And the reality of the matter is guys, if you have a faster workflow, if you can produce more content and be more efficient, that translates into more money in your bank account. So that's what this is all about. Excellent, this concludes the unboxing part. As you can see, I just uh, put the two displays, the old one and the new one next to each other. Obviously this is only one year old, but you can already see the size is what matters. If you're doing, for example, video editing, I could imagine maybe if you're an architect or something like this, everything where a lot of screen real estate makes a big difference in your workflow. If it speeds up your workflow, it speeds up the way you make money. So it's a worthwhile investment. And obviously, if you have a business, you can write it off as a deductible expense. And yeah, I can already tell you what I found from video editing on the small one. Yes, it works good, but I found myself uh, moving around in a timeline a lot, resizing the timeline a lot. And then also, if you, video, if you edit video, you have the footage right here and then the timeline down there. And if I had uh, multiple elements in my timeline, like the video, some audio beneath, some text above or some other effects, then I always had to move this around. So I really noticed that the screen real estate on the 24 inch 16 by nine is to, was simply too small over time. And it did cost me a lot of time to always readjust this with the timeline. So I'm personally hoping, or I know I will get a faster workflow out of this 4K monitor. So with that, let's jump to the next part, part three, where I test the monitor. And then I can show you how this improves my workflow. And guys, the first thing you're gonna notice when you take this out of the box and put it on your desk is how incredibly massive it is. I mean, look at the keyboard. The keyboard is tiny. So I'm very excited to turn this on. And I mean, guys, it even has a dedicated switch right there. So that's really old school. Very nice build quality. And also quickly jumping over here, you see connector for two HDMI inputs. So maybe you could, for example, connect to Apple TV. I can test that as well. If you have a 4K Apple TV, and I'm using the display port to test this absolutely massive display together with my old cheese grater Mac Pro that I bought to use on eBay and upgraded as well. For this, you can also find a complete tutorial series, my video editing rig. So guys, I, I'm simply gonna use this for a while and then I'm gonna be right back in just a second to tell you my impressions from using this for a couple of days. Now I connected the monitor and tested it for, uh, for a bit. And what I immediately noticed when I first connected it, like uh, you can see right now, is that everything is incredibly, incredibly tiny uh, to a point that it's too tiny. I mean, 4K resolution on a 32 inch screen, um, you gotta go into the settings and make some changes because let's quickly go to the system settings to see, I mean, that's so tiny to the point that it's not usable. So what do you got to do? You got to go to the settings and then you, the first thing you're probably going to do is you go to scale and you change the resolution down again, which is I think kind of unfortunate. Whoops, I scaled it up even. So let's say you scale it down again so that you have a, a text and icon size 
that is a little bit more appropriate. The problem with that is because it's a 4K monitor, it looks a little bit, yeah, maybe not, not as sharp and crisp and you lose that resolution. So what I found on the ISO webpage uh, is they have an explanation on what the different settings you can pick. And for some reason, if you go into the Apple menu, you have to first uh, push that function key so that everything, uh, sorry, this, this function key, so that everything shows up correctly. So let me go in a little bit closer. I hope this is in focus. So if you push that and then you click on scaled, then it will give you some additional options. And uh, like it said in the, uh, in the I'm gonna put that in the link below. So let's quickly change the resolution. That's a little bit more pleasant to the eye. And as you can see here, because I, I uh, push the function key, I now not only have the low resolution setting, in which I think it should be not as crisp and sharp, but I also have this setting. So let's quickly compare that. And that gives you a sharper, crisper image. So I put that in the link below, but nonetheless, even if I quickly go into my video editing software, which is down here, yes, I mean, I have a bigger screen. So uh, a screen uh, as in real estate. So a nice big display over here where I can see my content. And then that, that's what matters if you do video editing down here. You want a nice big fat space where you can put like an audio track, the main track, maybe some overlays, uh, the side cards that I'm always using if I want to explain something here, or maybe I want to overlay a picture. As you can see here, that's something I'm uh, doing quite often. So from this standpoint, the monitor is good because I have a lot of screen real estate. It makes it very comfortable to work with, but I still think the 4K 32 inch ISO is for me personally, it's a little bit too big. So it's very unfortunate because it's a great monitor, but most of the footage that I recorded so far is 1080p footage. So let's say I have finished my project. I did all the editing, which you can do great on that monitor, but then you wanna uh, watch it once before you export it. So let's say I play back that edited footage and I wanna watch it once before I export it. So to make sure that I didn't miss anything. I mean, my guess is if you're watching it right now on YouTube, that looks pretty good. But let me tell you, if I sit in front of it, I feel the, the screen is so big, uh, I really have to go further, further and further back. I really feel it's too big to watch this uh, type of content. And my guess is even if the re recorded video footage that I have would be 4K, still, I mean, the screen is so big, I, I always feel like I'm sitting too close to it. So if you really want to have a 4k display to have more screen real estate for video editing my suggestion is maybe the 27 inch simply because it's smaller but to be quite honest i'm i'm a little bit on the fence about this um, on the one hand it's really nice but uh, i also know that the full that iso has uh it's not full hd it's i mean it's almost full hd i think they call it w something so it's the 16 by 10 and the 16 by 10 is a little bit uh, deeper and that should also be maybe a better alternative. Also, it's cheaper, but that, that's maybe something I want to consider. I, I think they have a 16 by 10 color edge version, which an, an entry level one, which would be interesting. But guys, I almost feel the, the 4K 32 inch is too big for me because I always have to move back. Otherwise, it's the, the image is so big um, and uh, even if you watch a YouTube video, I, I feel like uh, the screen is like, it's, uh, it's just gin ginormous. So I'm not sure whether this is going to work out for me. I'm going to play around with, it, around with it a little bit more. And uh, yeah, that's something I didn't really think about. I didn't expect. So that's probably a good lesson for you to learn here. And guys, one thing I also wanted to show you is uh, these menus down here so you can touch that that's like touch sensitive and then this menu comes up and you can change a variety of settings such as the color the signal source the languages and so on so that's an interesting concept so you don't have really buttons here and one feature that's interesting is you see that's the light sensor you can for example turn on the echo view function and as soon as you turn on the echo view function it will detect the light from the sensor and then adjust the display brightness based on your environment light, which is nice. You have these leaves here, 
So that shows you that you're using the energy efficiently and also important the color settings. So right now I'm on sRGB, but obviously you have also the paper mode that reduces the blue light content. Everything looks warmer, which is kind of nice. Let's say you have some technical document or something you have to read for a long time. Then the paper mode is quite nice. Then obviously if you want to watch a movie, there's a movie mode also. Decom, I don't really remember. Maybe that was to watch some medical scans or some architecture stuff, something like this. But it's some kind of standardized thing into normal user settings. So guys, this concludes the quick walk through the menu. Uh, overall, nice impression, but yeah, I still think it's a pretty big monitor and I'm afraid maybe a little bit too big for me. Terrific, this concludes the review of the 4K 32 inch ASO display. And as you have seen, it's a really massive display. And uh, for my testing, uh, it had a few positive points such as the high resolution, uh, the big screen size. However, for video editing, as you can see, I'm not going to give it full points simply because when you edit footage on that big display, yeah, of course, when you edit footage, you need a lot of space, especially if your video projects grow more complicated. Then you have more and more elements on your timeline. You have your main footage, then you have some B-roll, maybe you have an audio track, maybe a voiceover, some effects. And the more complex your footage grows, basically the more space you need on the display uh, when it comes to your timeline. At least that's convenient to work with. What I found uh, the most negative thing is when I actually watch through the finally added project, when if I put it on full screen, I feel like I'm too close in front of the display. And like I told you in the test part, the display just felt a little bit too big for me. Uh, personally, I think the sweet spot should be with a uh, 27 inch. So I encourage you to check this out as well. And guys, this concludes the review. Uh, as I have maybe probably told you on my channel page, let me show this to you here. I have reviewed a bunch of other displays before, such as LG 4K displays, LG curved displays. That's also a good tip of advice that I can give you. If, for example, you are into gaming, a curved monitor is very, very nice because it just makes the experience more immersive. But uh, for me personally, I think I'm a 27 inch guy, uh, 16 by nine. Obviously, you also have to consider the aspect ratio. The ASO is 16 by nine. And um, for some people, maybe they want ultra wide, uh, maybe for gaming or if you do accounting or something like this, productivity tasks. Guys, this concludes this review. Let me know what other displays you want to see in the comments below. If you want, you can subscribe right now, but you don't have to. I see you in the next video. Take care. And because you just watched my monitor review, you might also be interested in comparing the uh, monitor that I've just shown you against some other ones. For example, these ASO Flex Scan line. Those are very nice monitors that are popular for office or maybe even graphics use. And uh, a lot of people have already subscribed because of the content that I provide for you guys here. You can subscribe right now as well if you want. And I see you in the next video and maybe even uh, as a subscriber. Take care.